think we're talking or we're talking about here where if you turn on and use spike power then you have that rate for the rest of the month things along those lines you know this came from an audience member would like managing energy from the consumer from the household that side of the year okay so like keeping track of what you're doing with your smart hub app and things of, the, of that nature Those types of programs right that you well i think that the smart hub is, is something that's been great for us as members i use it uh because one of my meters I use to keep stock tanks from freezing in the winter, and I use for animal beds and animal heaters in the winter. And I use, uh, I did, when I first installed those, I didn't use a, a temperature controller. And through the use of the smart app, smart app, I'm sorry, I could see that I, want, I was using power when I really didn't need to. So I purchased some, uh, some power plugs that were uh, temperature controlled, and I saw through the smart hub that I was able to cut down on my energy costs just because of that simple tool. So I think it's great to know more about what you're doing. Yeah, I also think um, the Smart Hub is extremely helpful. Um, I also think that net metering is getting more and more popular, um, kind of offsets um, what the member um, uses and what they put back out onto the grid. Um, and I think that that's probably going to change as it gets more and more popular. And I think that's something that the board will need to look at um, as far as placing that strategic plan. Um, but like I said, there, there may be needs to um, change that in the future or add in new programs. Thank you. Demand site management has been around as long as I was employed at DMEA. There's many rural electric co-ops that have the ability to turn on a hot water heater. <coughs> For a customer when there's a spike in the system. There's the time of use rate that we have. That is my favorite because it is something that's seasonal and the customers know the time of day that they can use their electric appliances, wash their loads of laundry without paying a higher rate and that their Saturdays or excuse me Sundays are at a cheaper rate. As long as the customers are in or our membership is informed and educated about the different benefits that they have available from the Rural Electric Co-op, whether it's utilizing the smart hub or the time of use rates or changing the rate that their energy is, is billed to them on, they'll benefit. Everybody on the left side here has pretty much answered and the only thing I think I could add would be that anytime you empower a member of this cooperative to be able to make logical decisions about the amount of their power usage, it's a good thing. And that anything that the board of directors can help support in helping the customers to decide how much and when they're using their electrical power is to the advantage of the entire membership. Thank you. Okay, we'll have one more question and then we'll go to closing statements. And this is one that I think you'll all like. <laughs> Andy, you're up. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Why are you running for the board? Ooh, I like that one. Well, I grew up um, in an electric household, and I don't mean that literally, but uh, my father um, worked for a public service company, then Colorado U. Um, he sat on the DMEA board for 12 years. Um, I had a couple of uncles that uh, worked for different power companies, and I was raised around it, um, and it just has always been part of my life. Um, when I was, well, I started selling real estate for Remax right out of high school, but then the, the market crashed. So I thought, well, what a great opportunity to see if I can become um, involved in, in the power industry and sure enough I found a real estate related job at Excel Energy um, and that was actually a um, public service company where my dad worked um, and from there I was able to make connections meet new people in the industry um, and that got me to, to be able to work with um, Tri-State doing right-of-way work so I've always had a love and a passion for it and I love the new technologies of it so I'm really excited I spent over half of my life serving the community, whether it's been as a staking engineer for Delta Montrose Electric, or serving on a nonprofit board, or serving with an advocacy group in the community or statewide. <coughs> and I'd like to continue to do that. I'd like to use my degree as 
as an engineer and go back to serving the customers of this cooperative. I've been very fortunate in my life to have sat on multiple boards. I was on the founding board for Denver Academy, which was the first school in the state of Colorado for children with learning disabilities. I went on to sit on the board of a corporation. I was one of three owners of that corporation, which is now a multinational corporation involved in environmental testing. And there's experience that you get from working on various boards. And the DMEA board is something that is a golden jewel. If you look at what's accomplished around that board table and what they've been able to accomplish, it would be an honor to be able to sit on that board and offer whatever expertise I can offer to help. Thank you. Growing up in Olathe, I've always loved where I lived and, and knew that I would uh, always be here. I left when got an education and it only assured me that I wanted to come back to where I was born. I bought a farm and I absolutely love farming and going to work in the family business as well. What inspired me to run for the board is, is partly is that uh, the, the, the members of Olathe have been well served to have a board member that's involved in agriculture. Um, I've been involved with agriculture my whole life since I was a little boy from playing in ditches to when I was old enough to finally have some responsibilities to going out on my own and doing it myself. I've worked very hard my whole life and tried to learn as much about everything that I absolutely could, even cooking sometimes. But I think what inspires me the most is that on a board like DMEA, you're, it's, it's easy to be a part of something good because this is such a good group and I feel like I can add value to that and be a good, be a good director and serve you guys and, and be a good director to help keep us relevant for the future. Okay. Now we're going to go to uh, closing comments and each candidate gets two minutes for their comments and the order will be Richard, Mandy, Kyle, and Tammy. Richard, you're up. Again, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. And I'd like to thank all of you for showing up. If you go on any cooperative web page, you're going to find out that there's seven principles of a co-op. And that seventh principle is concern for community. And one of the reasons why I want to be on the DMA board is because of my advocacy for children. In the Delta and Montrose school districts, over half of the children are on free and reduced lunches. And when you think that one of the core services that is essential to a parent providing a household for a child is electricity, I want to do everything I can to help keep those rates as affordable as they possibly can. It bothers me that half of the children are not able to buy their own lunch, and I wonder what they're doing on the weekends. I know there's programs now that they're sending kids home with backpacks so that they have something to eat on the weekends. And in my mind, that's atrocious. And I want to do everything that I can and continue to do what I've been doing. I've worked on uh, child poverty with the Department of Health and Human Services for several years, painted sky. Resource Conservation and Development Council worked on the child poverty issues, and it's something that's near and dear to my heart, and I hope it's near and dear to yours. And the other thing I would ask is that you call your friends and your neighbors and ask them to turn in their ballot. I'm not asking you to vote for me. I'm asking you to participate, because that's what makes this democracy work. Thank you. Well, in closing, um, the first thing I would like to say is I am a member that's affected by both the Montrose and Delta um, economic climates. Uh, my business fluctuates with, with the market, so if either county, uh, if the economy's down, then I'm down. So I feel like I have a vested interest um, in, in any way that I can to make sure that um, DMEA is there to help the community in any way they can. Um, and whether it be broadband, um, you know, whether it be more hydros, I don't know what that is, but I definitely want to help out. Um, I think I'm well qualified. Um, I'm very well educated. I have that bachelor's of business degree from Colorado Macy University. 
Um, I run a successful small business. I've sat on previous boards and um, City Montrose Planning Commission. I did work for the first and second largest um, elect electrical utility um, in the state, that being Tri-State and Excel Energy. Um, I feel like I have a firm issue with if the, or, I'm sorry, a firm handle on the issues at hand, um, and I'd like to hit the ground running. Um, I could definitely help with the broadband as far as the right-of-way help if that's ever, if that comes up. Um, I think I'd be a huge asset 